All right, so for this recording, I'm gonna go through a Substance Painter workflow for uh, some of the assets we might get for our game uh, proxy. Now, this asset I got was modeled by Rob Silva. Um, he's also our art director for the game, and he uh, did a pretty awesome job in uh, redoing this vehicle. And uh, as he has told me too, I believe he has UVs done for this vehicle, so that's another stage to the uh, pipeline I do not have to go through. Normally when I get a vehicle like this, it's the first thing I'll check, or I'm sorry, not a vehicle, but like a model for our uh, <clears throat> for our assets. I'll check to see if they have UVs. If they don't, I'll go through and I will UV them myself. But uh, this vehicle, he UV'd for a specific purpose for a substance painter workflow. Um, now he put everything in the same UV space. This is completely fine. Yeah, it's optional to do that, or you can actually go through and separate the shells out, separate parts of the vehicle or model out that you don't want to use. Now in this case, um, Substance Painter is going to read our vehicle, our car, our asset, and uh, not just by the actual model, but it'll look at it by UVs and also by the materials. So the materials are basically like you're splitting up different channels of your asset into different parts. So in uh, Unreal, we have a uh, shader for glass on the vehicles that's very tinted to separate these windows away from the rest of the vehicle. So the car is going to have its own UV uh, space to render out the materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split up the, um, I'm going to separate the car out in different parts by two different material channels, one for glass and one for the actual car paint for the entire vehicle. Uh, so what I'm going to need to do is I'll go to the Hypershade, which I can find that up in the uh, window, rendering, ed rendering Editors to Hypershade. And within Hypershade, I can see already that there's only the standard materials that come with any brand new Maya scene. So this is fine. Uh, even when you export a model out like this in Unreal, it'll actually know how to read Lambert, Blin, and Fong. But for this, I'm going to make a new Lambert material, and I'm going to give this material, by double-clicking on that material node, I'm going to bring up the attributes, and I'm going to give it a greenish color, just so I know, like, what exactly are the windows. So, give it a little bit brighter color. There we go. And so what I'll do here is I'll just rename it so I can know what I'm looking at when I look through the menus. I'll just call this glass underscore oops, come on, underscore max all right and to make sure that there's no other materials on this vehicle already I'm gonna just select the entire vehicle or the model asset we're gonna call it I'm just gonna call it video or vehicle for this and I'm gonna assign an existing material of Lambert to the entire vehicle so now I know that the entire vehicle has just Lambert on the model itself now I need to separate out these windows by assigning them a separate uh, material that we just built so I'm going to go into face selection mode and I'm going to select those different faces that I want separated to in inherit the glass material when we move this into Unreal and to also give it its own uh, viewing layer within Substance Painter. Now, now I got my faces selected, I can be sure that I have all that selected by going to different views. So let's go to I think all my views are actually the same. Yeah, they are because I usually work in the Z up axis. I ended up switching this to Y. So for right now, I'm going to say that, or I'm not going to say because I was wrong. It's extra right there. All right, that looks like everything is gone that we don't need selected. So let's assign that material, the glass, the windows. And let's assign the glass material. Okay. So now that material is assigned we have our parts separated. So next I want to go through and I want to take a look at this model and make sure that everything has been hardened or softened on the edges that I need to see. This is kind of important for previewing reasons in Substance Painter as well as when you move your asset into Unreal Engine it'll read the uh, hard, hard edges and soft edges of your model. Um, okay so that's good. I can tell already though that this bumper is hardened all the way around. Uh, also what I want to do for this bumper to make everything one transition between each program as we go into different programs is I need to look at the model's actual face normals. So I can do that by going into window, Dis I'm sorry, display, go down to polygons and we'll go to our face normals. Now our face normals are blown out so it's kind of hard to read this so I can also go back to display and under polygons 
where we had the face normals found, we can go down to normal size. This will allow us to adjust our normals down so we can actually read the uh, facing direction of our normals for our, our uh, objects. So this will tell us which direction these things are going to render out. This bumper is backwards compared to the rest of the vehicle, so this will this will be invisible, but the inside will not. So we need to flip this bumper around. So what I'll tend to do for something like this is I'll go into uh, face mode again. I'll select a polygon, and I know this bumper is separated from the rest of the car. So selecting that polygon, I can hold down shift, and, on the, and tapping the period key, I can grow my selection of faces, which I accidentally deselected. So I'll do that. And on holding down shift and right clicking, I can go to face normals. I can reverse these normals, and now our normals are facing the right direction. And now we need to go to our edges and soften up all the edges for, for right now. Two edges, two edges. We'll hold down shift, right click, and then we'll go ahead and soften our edges. Let's make sure I got that one more time. Soften edge. There we go. So now everything is softened. Now this would be, this might be passable, but for this bumper, I want the. Uh, polygons to read. Now I'm going to turn off my face normals up here. I created a shortcut for myself up here for a lot of tools I tend to access quite frequently. So I need to, I want to sharpen up the edge on this. So what I'll do is I'll go into face select again, go to the edge of that and I'll hold down shift and double tap to start selecting the ring of this bumper. And I believe that's it. So let's go to our edge perimeter of this entire face selection. Go hold down control. We can right click two edges, two edge perimeter. And now it has the center of these part of these edges selected, which I don't want. So I go through and I'm just gonna deselect all these. You can also do it quickly, a little bit faster than this by uh going in and um I'll hold down control too and I'll deselect these, not shift. Control is a little bit more a secure button to use. And uh, you can go down to the uh, side view and you can deselect all these if you're in the wireframe by holding down control, dragging a rectangular marquee box, and then just deselecting all the faces that you don't want or all the edges that you don't need. Okay, so now we have our edges that we want to harden out. We'll go ahead and go back to hardening edges. And now it has a little bit better silhouette that can read on the hard edge and soft edge parts of the model. Okay, so. I think our model is good to go now at this point in terms of hard hardening the edges and softening the edges. And let's start to the exporting process of this vehicle. Now, before we move this vehicle, one more thing I want to mention too is that Substance Painter works in the Y up axis. So our model is already up in the Y up axis, so it's fine. If you ever find yourself where you're working in the Z up axis or your car or your model is halfway tilted into the, to the scene, check your axis and what you're working on. If your axis is different, you can change the axis by going up to Window, Settings and Preferences, and coming into the Preferences. So one more time, I had a little bit of, bug, of a bug there, Preferences. And you come down to the Categories, come down to the Settings, and you can change your axis from Y to Z up. So you'll see that vehicle is going to flip because it's changing our axis down here. So Unreal works in Z up, same with models that might work in Max. But we're going to be working a Y up for between Maya and Substance here. So I'm going to save it out. Let's close out this window. And if your navigation seems a bit odd, you can always recenter your navigation orientation by holding down Alt and hitting the Home key. That'll recenter and reset your entire orientation. So let's go ahead and we'll export out this model. I'll export the selection. And I'm going to work within OBJ format for this model. So I'm going to throw it to my desktop, and I believe I might have a model in there already saved out of the car. No, I don't. So let's just go ahead and make a quick file. I'll call this proxy car for good reference. All right. And now on our exporting options, we want to make sure that materials, smoothing, and normals are selected. These are optional, but I tend to turn them off because I don't really need them. But make sure these three are definitely on for everything you're going to transfer out for your OBJ. So we'll export the selection to our desktop and now our uh, model should be visible on the desktop. It'll give us two different files. We have, one we have our OBJ and the other we have a material file. So let's go ahead and jump into Substance Painter. Give it just a second to load. Yes, I got the Steam edition. That way I can get achievements and all that cool stuff. And okay, so my goal for this vehicle is I want to get like just a uh, 
a base coating down for the uh, car because when I move it into Substance Designer I'm going to be using these solid colors on this vehicle to make alpha maps so that way we are able to expose different parameter channels in Unreal and uh, be able to do different changes to the vehicle on the fly when we're in the editor. So okay, well I'm going to disable uh, Substance real quick and in about 10 minutes in so I'm going to go ahead and I'll stop the video and when we come back I'll, make, I'll have uh, Substance open and I'll show you guys how we can get our scene set up in Substance Painter.